repeat. Uh, thank you. So uh, we said it is going to be a discussion. So I didn't, uh, I didn't therefore prepare any well, slides or notes to share because these, these, these are matters that uh, the topic covers a wider, a wider scope, but basically as the, uh, sorry? Can I mute your video? We see your face now. <laughs> Uh, maybe just briefly, and then uh, I can I can I can uh, can be excused to present offline. Is is it uh, is it allowed? Noted, noted. Yeah, so uh, that, that's me. Uh, please allow me kindly to, uh, to 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 put off the video, but where necessary, I'll, I'll always uh, put on in case uh, someone wants to see who is talking. I'll. Uh, I'll be, I'll be glad to share. Yeah. So, uh, what, what, what is the, what is the, uh, the discussion all about? We have, we, we have even the uh, inspector general nowadays. There's after every two meet, uh, after every two Mondays, uh, there is what we call the engage the IG. Uh, that that idea came from. Uh, very low levels of the enforcement team. And uh, we have really supported the idea and we are trying to also support the idea of uh, engage the ID, I mean the, the, the IG uh, in, the, in, the, in the context of community policing and, uh, and engaging citizens and law enforcement agencies to try to understand what is expected of us? What is your role as a citizen? What is uh, the role of the police officer, the magistrates, the judges, and everyone who is, in, who is involved? So uh, in such conversations, uh, mo most of the time, people want to learn uh, what law enforcement agencies do. Uh, so I, 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 I would suppose that if, Maybe someone has uh, questions before, or uh, people who had prepared their questions. The ones I posted are the ones that I had received from uh, people who were inboxing me. Uh, maybe if I could start with them, or if there are others, you uh, you'd, can post them on the chat. Uh, Madam General Teach will be sharing with me as we respond to them. I want to allow the flow to uh, the conversation to be driven by the audience uh, to, to bring out what you think the, we want to hide, to discuss the perceptions the myths and the facts uh, what what you've been thinking that this is it and what you have not been thinking and maybe to bring the conversation to reality for example i saw a question of uh, somebody asked about uh, uh, driving uh, driving you, you, while using a mobile phone. And uh, th that, this is one of the areas that really has uh, uh, caused a lot of conflict. When you refer to the traffic act, driving, uh, I mean, the traffic act has not been amended to repeal or to delete a section that requires uh, a driver to produce license immediately or within 24 hours upon a request by a traffic officer for inspection to validate whether the driver is, is, uh, is qualified or not. But uh, uh, technology and all modernization is taking over events that uh, businesses like Uber cannot operate without the driver having uh, license. So now the, the idea here, here is, that is in law what they call uh, the factor, and uh, I mean the, the comparison between the factor and the jury. What is on paper? What is on paper is that you are, the law requires you to produce driving license, the copy of a driving license upon request by the traffic officer. But what is not, what is popular, what is on the, the popular opinion on the other side is uh, it, it, it's not possible for all the drivers or even the technology and TSA is now, you know, and the, and the entire government is working towards digitizing all its services. But while, while the same government is digitizing the services, for example, having even the digital license and, and all that, the law has not been changed. Uh, another common thing, like for example, trespass, 
what, why do you have a law like trespass? These are laws that were put by the white men when they didn't want Africans to cross through their, uh, uh, their territories. But over time, nowadays, uh, even, uh, you know, nobody crosses over. We are, we are, most of our compounds are gazetted, are fenced. And so, but the law has not been repealed. So if today I were to go by law, I, if you trespass through my land, I'll take you to court. But uh, he, when the officer is not, uh, I mean, is not uh, so kind of human, you can, he has the right to you know, take it up as a criminal offense. Now, uh, somebody, Sam, Samita, he has raised the hand. Maybe if you can allow Samita to uh, take over and uh, ask the question or maybe say whatever uh, he seeks to get clarification. Uh, looks like uh, Sanita doesn't have an audio uh, device because I can see she's only connected on video. Or oh, actually already exited, so you can proceed, Elinor. Uh, thank you, thank you. So uh, maybe I'll start by looking at the questions that uh, uh, somebody had asked uh, has sent to me and the ones that I had posted on the, the, the group. Number one, somebody asked me, uh, what happens if, uh, say you are doing business with someone in the UK and they happen to call you the money, what are you supposed to do? Do you go to UK embassy? Do you need to fly to UK to report uh, the case or do, do I report where I stay in, uh, in, in in Jogorod or what do I do? I, what, do, I do? Uh, what you are required to do in such a case, you report to, uh, to the nearest uh, police post or police station where you, uh, you reside. Now, the process of such an investigation of such a case is, uh, in, once you have reported, this is a cross-jurisdiction uh, matter. Uh, the OC crime will minute the case to DCI, uh, meaning means assigning in the, in the law enforcement. Uh, the OC crime uh, or the OCS will assign that case to uh, DCI. Then DCI will refer uh, to the specialized crime, I mean, a specialized unit. And all these specialized units, most of them, if not all, uh, are, are based at the headquarter. And the reason why they are based at the DCI headquarter is because. Uh, Interpol, which is the regional coordinating uh, enforcement uh, agency, is also based there. So it, for efficiencies and in, 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 in terms of such uh, uh, engagement, that's why they, they stay uh, in the same or nearby. So uh, then it is uh, the Interpol that will take over, of course, in liaison with the local authorities of both jurisdiction, if maybe the, the, the the suspect is in UK. It is the Interpol that will engage uh, UK police to try to uh, find out uh, the allegations, to validate the allegations. And if there is need, maybe arrest and all that, it will be done by UK, I mean, by Interpol. And then uh, once the Interpol is successful in the arrest, they'll hand over the suspect to, uh, they'll hand the suspect to the local enforcement authority. So you, you, you uh, to respond to that, uh, to the person who had uh, asked uh, the question, you don't go and you don't need to travel to UK, you don't need to go to the embassy, you only need to report the nearest police station and the, uh, the local authority will take it up from there. Uh, who is a witness? Uh, a witness is a person who, uh, any person who has used any of the five senses, to encounter um, an incident, you have used you are either you saw it, you felt it, uh, feeling it. Um, I don't know how do I put it with your nose. You, the nose that the nose feel and the skin. Uh, you can. You, you, how do I differentiate feeling for the skin and the feeling for the nose? You smell, and then uh, the other one is. 
basically a witness must have been uh, at the scene and during uh, the time when that particular incident happened. Uh, many times witnesses are disqualified uh, during cross-examination because you go there and uh, you start saying, uh, I was called, he told me, I, I knew, I expected this, you are not a witness. You are only a witness if you saw it or you had uh, yourself, you were there listening to uh, the whole story or part of it, you felt it, maybe it was a, a fight and uh, also uh, uh, even if you don't see and you can't hear, uh, you felt uh, a push or a pull in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the struggle. So you qualify to be a witness or you smell something, maybe somebody was cut and you, you smelled uh, raw, um, raw blood or some, maybe it was alcohol. The, 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 question, the matter before uh, discussion is that somebody is alleged to have opened a, a glass of beer. So might, maybe you smelled, you can, you, can, uh, you can attest and say, I, I, I was there and I and, and, I, and uh, I smelled a beer. Maybe that, that it was a task or something like that. What happens after reporting and obtaining uh, occurrence book number, uh, popularly known as uh, OB? And what is the purpose of that particular number? And what happens if I lose that uh, number? Well. Uh, uh, Reporting basically is for two, it serves two purposes. One is to uh, allow formal, uh, is to allow the authorities to formally launch an investigation with intentions of either ex exonerating the suspect or incriminating them. Uh, that is basically the, uh, that is basically the purpose of reporting. So somebody asking what happens after uh, you have reported? Once you have reported, you still have a long way to go because actually you are the mover of the, of the investigation. You are, you are required to work hand in hand with the investigating officer to support and support each other. If by now I go to a police station and report that uh, ABCD has happened, uh, normally the occurrence book is minted, uh, is, is um, uh, the, the OCS, uh, currently known as uh, the Sambu County of, uh, Police Commander, uh, reviews and, uh, and, and assigns cases within a 24-hour shift, unless if it's an emergency case that requires uh, urgent attention or, or rather to assign an investigating officer immediately. But uh, on, under normal circumstances, it is uh, the OCS or the OC crime, but mostly the OCS does the mini thing within 24 hours. So when I report a case right now, and get the OB, my work is not done. Uh, tomorrow, uh, you are required to go back to that uh, very station and inquire from the report office who has been assigned uh, my case. You will produce that, uh, uh, that, uh, that OB, which is the reference. Uh, you can, it's a reference number to whatever you was entered as the initial report. Then the officer at the report office, known as the uh, the sentry, will uh, report report office officer will uh, give you uh, the details of the officer, the number and the name, and possibly even the rank. Takuandiki uh, apo PC Alinori phone number zero seven X X X like that. So your work is from there is to call the uh, the investigating officer and they uh, introduce yourself, say, I, I am Kwena, I, um, I reported a case of theft yesterday here. The, the, the office, investigating officer in a station sits in an office called the uh, crime branch. The officer will uh, direct you, then you go there, you'll have a, uh, a brief conversation, what happened, and all that. Then uh, from there, maybe the officers, uh, from there, the officer will ask you to do one, two, three things. One of them could be go and uh, for this particular case, and I want to use an example of uh, common case like assault. For you to uh, do an, an, an assault case, you need to uh, have, rep after reporting, you need to proceed to the hospital, uh, uh, get 
some treatment, come back. Now, uh, when you come back, the officer, the investigating officer assigned to handle your case will issue you with a, a P3 form on behalf of the OCS directed to the police doctor or a qualified medical officer uh, uh, requesting for an examination to be done on you based on your allegation that you were attacked or you were injured to examine the magnitude of the injury caused on you. Reason of the magnitude is that assault is of different degrees. One, could, it could be just a you know, general assault, uh, the one under 251, but uh, the, it could be grievous, uh, causing actual harm, maybe So uh, the police doctor or the, uh, the, the, the qualified medical doctor will, will, uh, will examine and say whatever is indicated there. Return that P3 form to the investigating officer. You, that is your work as the reportee and as the victim. At that time, uh, the investigating officer or the police uh, or the law enforcement officer in general uh, can, uh, is doing nothing about your case. It is now you uh, moving your case. Bring back the uh, bring back the P3 form. Then after bringing back the P3 form, you will be requested to make a statement. Uh, uh, your statement. Now tell us in, uh, formally what is uh, what exactly happened. While recording the statement, either you can choose to do it yourself or your lawyer, or if you are not uh, so good, and sometimes you advise uh, the police officer will write for you, but indicate ROC. I'll explain what ROC means uh, later. Then uh, you will be requested to produce at least two or three witnesses who saw Kichapwa Ama when that thing happened. That is still your work. It's still the victim or the, the reportee moving, uh, playing his part. The police has not started doing anything. So once you bring the, the, uh, the witnesses, they'll make, they'll record their statements. Then from there, uh, the police work starts. Number one, they'll visit the scene if need be. Uh, uh, and then uh, from there, of course, visiting the scene, most of the scenes of assault, they might come back with the suspect, if the suspect is uh, readily available. And then uh, from there, the suspect, now the police work, now from uh, at that point, you, the reportee, will sit. Now the police takes over. The police takes over by arresting the suspect, Recording the state, uh, suspect statement, recording the accused uh, record that is like taking fingerprints, prepare the file, uh, police file, uh, which is uh, uh, a, a complete police file is from subfile A to subfile J. Uh, maybe I'll explain that later also. Uh, prepare the file and within 24 hours present uh, uh, the, the accused in court. But before presenting the accused uh, in court, remember there is an office called the ODPP. This is the office that is mandated by law to peruse, to advise the police on the appropriate legal uh, processing. The, once the police officer has, uh, 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 has processed the file, he's, he's supposed to take it to the ODPP. The ODPP will peruse. Uh, perusing in this context means we'll go through the statements, we'll, uh, we'll go through the evidence produced and see whether this meets the criteria uh, to support your, your, your claim. You are saying you want to charge this person with murder, but you don't have, you have not uh, pro produced evidence uh, that can stand murder. You want to, uh, to charge this person with, uh, with assault. But there is no evidence here. Even the statements are not even talking about, uh, you know. So the ODPP will advise if there are changes to be made, the ODPP will advise and say, do go make ABCD changes or add this. If you want to charge this person with murder, please add this. Uh, until ODPP agrees and approves the file, that file cannot be taken to court. Perception uh, is, People think that once you go and report, uh, they expect that you, the, the police will immediately go and arrest and uh, take that person to court. No, that, that uh, and if the police have not done, 
uh, the arrest or have not done to your expectation, many people will complain and say, oh, the police are not, they are reluctant. No, it's only that some, most of the time police don't explain uh, now like what I'm doing, they don't explain uh, what is supposed to be done. And now because people don't know, and of course, if you don't know and you have your own expectations, I understand from the layman perspective that this, part, this person will uh, feel like the police is not doing their work or the law, the law enforcement uh, agencies in general is not, are not doing their work. But uh, from the practical, uh, from my experience, it is not that the, the law enforcement uh, agencies don't do their work. It's only that sometimes they don't uh, explain this well to the member to the members of the public whom they are serving that your case will now have to uh, you may have to wait and the most common example is when it comes to cases of um, uh, murder when okay the cases that fall under CR, the serious crimes uh, when you report for example a case and say um, or oh, your, your brother or your, your, your friend, a beloved one, was murdered by somebody. Sometimes it is not easy. And like I've said and uh, stated earlier, until the ODPP approves that this person, uh, based on the evidence, and who is to produce evidence, you know the police, it is you, the reportee. You, want to, you, are, you are claiming that the uh, ex uh, uh, murdered. It is not just you saying, you you are the one to provide, to furnish police with strong water type evidence that they will use also when they go to uh, DPP to seek approval for your file to be approved that yes, based on the evidence that has been presented, this person uh, is, is should be charged with murder. Then uh, until that is done, that person who killed your mother will be walking and drinking with you in the same village square and there's nothing you can do. And that does not mean that that person uh, has been, has compromised the police, it is the law. Uh, the other common thing that we uh, have noted, when somebody steals from your compound and you get them, and then you beat them, muizi, 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 muizi you are helping that person evade justice. Because uh, by any chance, after uh, assaulting this person, after beating this person, the police will come of course and arrest the person. But then the law is very, very clear. And the, the law is very unfair sometimes. You cannot take, uh, there is no OCS who will take a person with a dismantled face to the court, the, the, the judge will, will uh, the judge will, uh, uh, will will send you back with uh, will tell you to take that person to hospital. So uh, one, mutu akiwa mekuibia, ukisika yeye. It is you and the thief. Don't involve the mob. The mob will not be there in the court. Watapiga na wataenda. Now, then now you go and report, the police will take the suspect to, uh, in custody, but immediately they will take the person to the hospital. Then when they take the person to the hospital, the uh, doctor will say this person needs a bed rest of probably even a month. And once somebody has been given a bed rest, uh, and I would want to give Your father, please. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, some, some, uh, I was distracted. Uh, can I be heard? Can I proceed? Yes, we can hear you now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry for that interruption. Now, uh, when when somebody has been bitten and taken to hospital, the hospital doctor has said this person needs to be uh, given a bed rest for a month. That person will not go to court. Uh, uh, from there, where is he going? Home. Or oh, where is he going? He, uh, literally, is like the, the, the hospital has set this person free. Uh, you will see that person, and no, uh, you cannot dispute the, the police. The police cannot dispute the expert, uh, the medical officer that this person they know is. So 
uh, you will see that person uh, walking, but the police will not arrest the person because the person, this person has a document showing that he's on bed rest. And, and, and of course, in law, you cannot argue that you know him, he, he lied. No, the person is uh, on bed rest according to the medical officer. Who is the person that we rely on to, uh, to, to define whether or not you are capable? I mean, like maybe for, you've heard of uh, when you do, you commit murder, you must go and um, you must be taken for. Uh, uh, brain test, tongue, a psychiatric test, you know, all those things. And sometimes that is why the whole story, it, it takes long, probably even a month. And during that time, we must maybe, I mean, he is free. Police will not arrest them. And the, the perception people normally have around this is that uh, that person is known to police or that person is known to so and so, so they are is taking advantage and, uh, and, and all that. that. That's a perception uh, for anyone. Uh, if you want to take it very well, don't beat a suspect. You will be distorting or uh, helping that person to evade justice. Uh, allow me to proceed to the other question, somebody. I have a question. Sorry, sorry. I have a question. Please ask. We have this very common crime that is now very, very common during this COVID, where people are uh, kidnapped, uh, held for some time, forced to give their PIN numbers to the phone, forced to give their PIN numbers to the bank. Uh, then they are defrauded. All the money in the bank goes. The money in the phone goes. M. Shwari goes. They borrow from M. Shwari. They fuliza, they even go alone from the bank. You report to the police. What is the procedure now? Because this is a combination of both uh, robbery with violence and, and, and uh, cyber crime. Well, how do we follow this? I know someone who was attacked that way. And you see, we don't know where to, how to follow that. I'll give you further advice of this forum on how to uh, how to go about that. But generally, this is how to go about it. Eh? Yeah. Uh, one person or a group of, group of people can be charged with as many counts as possible, even if there are hundreds. Uh, that uh, once you you report one, uh, the initial report will should be able to clearly indicate that you were robbed and uh, maybe gunpoint that is a uh, robbery with violence, yes, which the, the, uh, has to be proved that way. Uh, is there, was there that weapon that threatened you? I mean, how, how is this violence? Uh, how are you proving the violence? I, 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 want to, I wish to emphasize here that reporting is as easy and the police will report anything that you tell them. Even if now you walk into a police and say, my chopper has been stolen, they will report. Now, it is, the, it is your burden, you who has reported to prove, to help the police prove what you have reported. Police will not help you. You will help them to prove. If you, 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 you have been robbed uh, uh, with, with the, at a gunpoint with a knife, that is, uh, from a look of things, that is robbery with violence, and that has been captured as such. Then further, uh, this person has taken your phone and forced you uh, to take a loan with the, with, the, with the bank, to take a loan, a soft loan with the mushuari and all those. Now, that is another... An, an, another crime, of course, another count, that, uh, uh, so to speak, that will all be reported. So number one, once you have reported, that case squarely falls under the DCI. Uh, the DCI will deal with it. There is a serious crime. Both of them actually, uh, uh, Robert with the stroke two and uh, and uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, mobile uh, mob mobile money uh, stealing. Uh, or rather that force of uh, forcing you to take a loan. Uh, the DCI will investigate this way. If it is uh, for, for mobile, for example, uh, I don't want to give final details, but for example, if, you, if the person forced you, uh, this money, there is always 
where it, the transaction started and where it ended. That will always give you uh, a hint. We, I, I saw a case uh, around March. Uh, somebody reported that he was, uh, uh, was uh, kidnapped and forced to, to you know, send money. But uh, upon in, uh, investigation, the numbers that were receiving money, you know, when you do mobile uh, network analysis, these are people you communicate with. For example, Major, right now we have been talking. I know you. And then I kidnap myself and send money to you. And then I advise you to throw that line. You will not run away from that. If it, if it is a robbery with violence, it has also to be proved uh, beyond reasonable doubt that yes, there was that uh, gun, there was that knife, there was that thing. And I know that because you can't say you were robbed un, uh, at gunpoint, but uh, uh, the, you know you are, you are, you can't give even uh, you know something that demonstrates there was something like a gun or something like a weapon. Maybe did I answer your question, General? Uh, yes, to, to, uh, to some extent, because now you know where do I fall up from that? Because if I've reported and I've given the 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 number the ob number the i think number. And, yes uh, so, so, yeah. and then i even get the um, mpesa as uh, uh, statement that is and, not uh, actually your work mm. getting mpesa statement that is not your work and and and, and, and unless requested by the io by the okay. investigating officer your work is uh, i said tomorrow call the, the go to the police station uh, yes. with the OB number, you request to know who has been assigned your case. That okay. person should be able to advise you that now after, of course, they, you will have a conversation, it, an interrogation, an interview with you. It's called uh, an interview, yeah? Yes. That this one will, inter will interview you, the IO will interview you to ascertain uh, whether what you are saying can meet the minimum threshold to uh, launch an investigation in line or uh, in the view of a possible uh, 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 robbery with violence. So uh, it is, uh, it is I, the IO to guide you based on the uh, interview response that you will give that now this is what is request, required of you. This uh, idea, okay. uh, statement for between this period and this period, it's not you who will decide the MPESA statement for which period. Because sometimes, even uh, if I were you, if I were the IO, I would request a statement for a month uh, earlier, uh, not the current, you know, uh, something like that. Maybe that is the start point. So the IO should be able to uh, advise you uh, based on individual case merits. What have you said during your uh, interview session? What happened? How did it happen? Are you able to identify these people? Are they, I mean, if they were to be arrested, can you identify them through an identification parade? Uh, do you, from your explanation, are, are these people who knew that you have money? Could it be, uh, maybe it's your wife or a friend who knew you have money on your center? So all, how you respond during the interview session will guide the investigating officer as to whether uh, this is the route or the other, that is the route. I cannot give that this is directly what will happen because each case has both uh, different dynamics. Okay. Yes, yes. Thank you. Now that's, that, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Good. How long does, an, does it take to investigate a case? I do give this example many times and I, I've always given the example with the, the former president of US, John Kennedy, who was, uh, who, who, who was assassinated 57 years down the line. FBI, CIA, Secret Service, and all those are still investigating to date. And uh, we all know, and we have always given reference to uh, CIA and, the, and such uh, investigative agencies that we believe they are the superior in terms of experience, in terms of uh, equipment and all that. So if they have been investigating a, a case like assassination of a sitting president 57 years down the line, I mean, it tells you that uh, how long will it take to investigate a case it depends on how complex is the case. 
And uh, that is the key. But other factors also will determine how long it takes. For example, cooperation, witness cooperation. Sometimes you have so many people, uh, you know, backing you up and telling you 20, 20. But when they tell you, and they tell Masaid, you go and they say, Banat live, Nimambiwa, where's Ulikua Jan? Hey, come work with I mean, they refuse. Your witnesses refuse. We call you, they are called by police and they say, I mean, that's an Ikombali. Ladan Ikuja next week. These are that they are Kombali. Maybe some of your witnesses are, are not cooperating and the, the case cannot move without them. Uh, so those are some of the factors that uh, determine whether the case will take too long or too fast. Uh, sometimes uh, the uh, most common nowadays uh, uh, is the prosecution, the uh, lo, lo advocates' uh, uh, techniques. Uh, Maras, my 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 client is sick. Uh, you know, the, you know those tactics, the delaying tactics of the of the, the, the advocates, the lawyers, and the prosecution. Uh, this one seeks an order. Uh, you know, you, you cannot uh, get this, you will be infringing my, my client rights. And yet, maybe the investigating officer is seeking to obtain a bank statement uh, to ascertain the fraud allegations around the, the case. And then uh, the other one compels the, the advocate or the, the counsel comp uh, gets an order uh, stopping the bank from sharing and saying, no, my client has a privacy agreement with, 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 with you. You cannot breach it. This is not national security. This is so such delaying tactics by again, the parties that would be uh, important in removing the wheel of justice, sometimes determine uh, how long an investigation will take. Next, uh, somebody asked, uh, can I personally arrest a, a, a suspect? I think I should delete the criminal and say suspect because either way you can. The law allows uh, anyone, uh, irrespective of whether you are an enforcement officer or not, to arrest. There is what we call civilian, civilian arrests. You will arrest the person and take them to, uh, to the station and uh, hand them now to the officer. So now the officer will do what we call re-arresting. So that uh, is exempted from giving initial report as the arresting officer, Ali Letewa too. But now the arresting person is you, uh, but the, you hand over to the uh, police officer and now the police officer is not the arresting officer, but he has re-arrested. They will book the, the person and the, you continue uh, with your case as such. So yes, it, you can make the arrest as an individual or as a, as a private citizen. Uh, interesting one, what's the difference between GSU, AP, K, KPS, and DCI? Uh, I think let's look at the similarity first. The similarity is that they are all law enforcement officers, including among others, uh, National Intelligence, Coast Guard, KDF, Kenya Forest, NYS, those are all law enforcement. Uh, the similarity is that they are all law enforcement agencies. Now, uh, GSU, KPS, and DCI, uh, Nikitu Moja, they are all... Uh, they are all, if I may call them, sons of one mother and one father. The only difference is that, uh, for example, for, for GSU, uh, they train from a different uh, camp and uh, while uh, KPS, Kenya Police Service and DCI train from the same uh, college, from uh, basically uh, all DCI officers must have been uh, initially, before the, the, the merging of the AP came uh, recently, must have been uh, by default was an officer of the Kenya Police Service. Uh, this year is just uh, is just a, a unique or rather uh, a specialized department within the strike the, the, the formations of, uh, of the of the Kenya Police uh, Service. So uh, the difference between DCI is that DCI handles complex uh, cases only, uh, other than uh, the Kenya police that would handle even assault. You don't expect DCI to handle assault. You don't expect them to handle cases of, uh, uh, say, mugging, for example, to these petty, petty cases. But still they can. They are still our officers, uh, like uh, those others, like traffic, like diplomatic, and any other police officer. 
Uh, in terms of what they do, uh, I've said this year investigates serious crimes, majorly that is how, what identifies them. Kenya police, of course, also does investigation of including other crimes major, but uh, basically, uh, uh, mostly, uh, it's like the first, uh, the first response line of the of the of the police, because uh, it is under Kenya police service that you get uh, crime aid. Uh, the, uh, you'll get the guards. You'll get uh, you know what we call the GD or an Alinda Bank, where you will get. Uh, when you want the escort, uh, dog dog is your the pesa, you'll get them there and all that. And then uh, GSU uh, uh, is a unit whose history uh, is was is more of a, uh, where it's more tough. Uh, there's too much violence beyond uh, beyond uh, maybe the capacity of the Kenya Police Service. And uh, maybe to just go in slightly deeper in terms of uh, uh, functionality, the equipment, uh, the machinery provided to this uh, GSU uh, gives them a distinction to handle uh, more violent case uh, incidences, come uh, riots and all that, as compared to the counter or the colleagues in the Kenya uh, Police Service and also uh, maybe with the DCI. So we will not uh, go much into that, uh, how that is done. We let's assume we don't know that. Uh, Administration police is um, now is also, uh, as we move on, it seems to be being eliminated, but uh, administratively, the administrative police is, was meant to support the administrative wing of the government. Uh, their training syllabus is more of, a, you know, being a civilian, kind of police but uh, still it's also it's a, it's a police uh, unit they are not so much into dealing with the day-to-day -day operations of the public and on that note i would wish to highlight that uh, it's only the kenya police service that has got a gazetted uh, book where you can report if you have a case and this is mostly to our friends who are in uh, villages if you have a case don't uh, uh, you may go to the uh, AP uh, camp? Is not uh, actually they are called the camps, but uh, it is not uh, it is not done until it is in the hands of the Kenya police, and that is in the Okares book, which is the only and only gazetted book that can be used uh, at any given points, whether in court or anywhere. For AP, when you report there. Uh, you have just informed the government, but you are not on the right, you are not really, I don't want to say right, but you are not really uh, pursuing the criminal justice course. Because if, say, for example, you you are requested to prove in court that you reported, out of the an extract from there. No, it won't be admitted. But uh, it is, it's good. You can always run to a P camp if that is the nearest uh, uh, enforcement uh, unit around or near you. Uh, what are some of the law enforcement agencies? I've mentioned them. Anyone else? Kenya Forest, uh, Kenya Wildlife, uh, Kenya Defense Forces, National Intelligence. Uh, 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 Kenya Revenue, uh, ESCC, Independent uh, uh, IPOA, all those are law enforcement agencies, only that they, some of them are specialized. Kama KWS deals with specifically Uko Wanyama, Kenya Wildlife, I mean, Kenya Forest and all that, but they are all enforcement agencies, uh, including uh, some bit of Kanjo. Uh, certificate of good conduct validity. It is valid uh, on that is only uh, it, it, it is valid uh, uh, until or up to the date of issue. If your certificate is issued today, the 1st of June, as a law enforcement officer, it is valid up to the 1st of June. Because uh, the fingerprints were taken yesterday, or even probably uh, earlier on, earlier uh, that date. So if uh, you know, if we were to go by, it, if we were to define it from the law enforcement perspective, 
the certificate of good conduct is as valid uh, uh, is valid until the date of issue. Uh, subsequently, it is not because uh, you can you can uh, you can you can commit a crime or maybe there was an ongoing uh, invest case uh, when they before be, 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 uh, prior to the issue that now the ruling or the conviction was done yesterday. So you, uh, your certificate will not be valid. But for employment purposes, uh, each employer defines it differently. Others will say three months, others one year, others, but that is not. So uh, there is another certificate of good conduct, co uh, police clearance that is um, uh, issued by, by, by Interpol or DCI for some specific cases. Uh, say you're looking for employment uh, in the national intelligence or Interpol or uh, other uh, uh, specialized enforcement units, there is, a, there is a clearance that is done and a certificate is issued for that matter. This particular one, the good conduct is just a basic, basic, uh, basic security clearance. Uh, can I report and still be arrested? Very well, yes. Uh, in fact, if right now you walk into a police station and say, we were playing or we were eating and my husband just collapsed, you are the first witness, you are supposed to be arrested until, uh, uh, until interrogated and, and, and proved that uh, uh, you did not participate uh, either directly or indirectly into the collapse of your husband, you are supposed to be first of, arre uh, first of all arrested. Uh, if you walk to a police station and say uh, uh, your vehicle has been stolen, you are the first suspect. You are supposed to be uh, put in self custody and help the police uh, really uh, exonerate the, uh, you from the case. So uh, by you going to report, uh, it does not mean that now you are safe. Some cases unakwango mesaidia, but still we encourage, even if it's you who has done it, go and report for the good of the other, for, for the good of your victim, uh, just go and report. Even if you'll be you know, held in self custody or, uh, or to help the investigation, still you'll also have helped the victim. Uh, where can I report and what is the procedure if I, if I, I think you meant to say if I am offended by a police officer or a law enforcement uh, agent or officer. Now, uh, the reporting mechanisms are as many as, uh, uh, as possible. Uh, I don't know whether the person who posted the question uh, maybe is, is, a, is, an, is a law enforcement officer or a, uh, purely civilian, but either way, uh, cases between uh, law enforcement officers are handled uh, by internal uh, or are handled primarily by internal uh, organs. Uh, for example, we have the AAI, we have the AIU, we have the TCC, we have the uh, uh, called WCH for the Marine. Uh, they, are, they, are in, they are primarily they are always internal. Uh, organs within uh, various enforcement agencies that handle cases between, and also to some extent between uh, um, uh, officers and, uh, and, uh, and officers, and also to some uh, little extent, officers and civilian. Uh, I think this, to, this uh, particular question meant, uh, and you said the police officer, is the independent uh, police oversight authority. That is the constitutionally mandated uh, body that investigates all. Actually, it, uh, when, you, when you look at uh, the, the Poor Act, section 23, 24, and 27, uh, that is where uh, all of us will uh, refer to when you are seeking assistance, uh, when you're offended by a police officer. And being offended is either the police officer has failed to do what is ought to have done, or they have done what they ought to have, uh, not have done, including uh, corruption. And, 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 and again, mentioning corruption, many times, uh, uh, get the remote and uh, reduce the volume. Eh? Okay. Sorry. Uh, many times, uh, when, when, when people complain of police corruption, the same people, when you get one person and ask them, 
Can I help you? And will you be a witness? Nobody is ever willing to be a witness. Uh, when you ask anyone to take, uh, you know, at least evidence, even this police officer has rights, uh, the same right that you do have. You cannot uh, simply vindicate them merely on, uh, on, on assumption. You cannot just say, at, 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 at the corner, no, you need to prove your case. And I, I, I reiterate that very strongly. You should always be able to prove your case. So uh, uh, just uh, you know, uh, making noise around it and uh, showing dissatisfaction is not enough. You, you know, uh, you oh, you need to have some evidence to support what you are claiming, and you need to be available and ready to help the other players. You need to help the investigating officer to support. You need to testify against this officer. Yeah, uh, that is it. Uh, can I be forgiven for any wrongdoing? Yes and no. Uh, sometimes the government, uh, yes, when the government maybe has given an amnesty and they Sorry, somebody speaking? Okay. Uh, maybe the government has uh, given, and we always see this, they say, if you have a, um, an illegal gun, please return. I mean, uh, that way you will not be... Uh, you will not be prosecuted, you will be forgiven. But sometimes, uh, or sometimes uh, uh, I, uh, we saw recently ESCC explaining that uh, you can voluntarily walk into a ESCC and say, ah, I, this money I got it uh, if in heavy, uh, and I wish to return. That way, you are way of, the way you'll be handled is not the same way as when they come for you. So it is a yes and no based on uh, two examples given above. Is it, accept, is, is it acceptable for the law enforcement authorities to reconcile peace between the victims and the accused? When I was uh, in the police force, I used to tell us, yes, don't overcrowd the police cell like, uh, like, like, like um, uh, Nyumba Kuku. Uh, some of the cases when, the, when you, crowd, you crowd the cell, uh, uh, for example, uh, unapata timutu anadai mungine miambili wa mepigana jia ulevi. Why, can, uh, why can't you make them understand? Why can't you reconcile them? Instead of, you know, uh, I, I see some very funny things. Ati unashiko kwa sababu umesukisha chini ya mask, ama hauna mask. Now that is a malicious officer. A good and professional officer should remind you, ndugu habari, eh, mask yako iko api. Oh, niko nayo hapa. Ama even sometimes hauna, eh, akupe, ama hata akulazimisha ununue nyingine. I, it, is, it, is, it is very unfair for a police officer to arrest you for simply uh, putting on your mask hapa chini. You know, that is a malicious officer. We cannot debate uh, much about that. But uh, a good police officer sometimes, uh, or law enforcement officers, not all cases are supposed to be taken to court. Some of these cases happen because people don't know what is expected of them. Of course, ignorance is not defense, but it is uh, your obligation as a law enforcement officer to help them understand, have discussion the way we are having now and make them understand that Lugu, if you do this, it can lead you to, you know, and make them understand their roles. Uh, sometimes I see, uh, common cases of, uh, for example, CG landlord and, 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 and the tenant. Those are not criminal cases and they cannot be heard within the police. Uh, there's a tribunal that handles that. So why would you, when, the, when somebody comes to a police station and report that the uh, landlord or tenant has done this, why, why, do you, why, why, why would you not make them understand uh, that first of all, they're in the wrong place because the police will not handle that fully. Uh, yeah, and uh, make them understand that even uh, going to police, going to chief is not an option. This is an, another option is uh, calm down, listen to each other, listen and understand each other. For you to differ, you need to, you must uh, listen carefully, grasp and uh, uh, well, I mean, that way. So it is allowed for reconciliation, however, you need to remember there are cases that you cannot and you should not dare to even do reconciliation. Cases that uh, purely, for example, defilement, 
uh, defilement is a case, the, uh, the complainant is not even the, the, the victim. The victim is a witness. Uh, uh, the complainant in the case of defilement is the state through the police. So that one you don't, you cannot negotiate. You cannot, you don't need to reconcile uh, that one. You have to fully support the victim to uh, get the right um, uh, justice. Uh, other cases of uh, robbery, you know, serious crimes. I mean, those ones, uh, you don't need to, uh, you should not reconcile the, 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 the victim and, the, and the, the, the suspect. But for petty cases, yes, uh, that one is, is okay for law enforcement agencies to reconcile. Uh, uh, what is what is it, uh, what is it aiding police investigation? So idea of police <laughs> uh, In some group, somebody asked me why, is it that uh, it is never a good thing to support uh, or aid the police? You know, uh, as I, I said, when you uh, when you go to report that uh, you were taking tea, you, you know, these cases we've been hearing that uh, an old man was having an affair and then he died. The first suspect, and of course, uh, who should be put in custody is you. So uh, you will be put in custody to aid in an investigation. And the purpose of an investigation is either to incriminate you or to exonerate you from the allegations. So whatever you, uh, whatever you will uh, give the investigators will determine whether you can be, you know, you will be treated as as a suspect. Or in some cases, we've had uh, Madam Waiguru, Governor Waiguru, was a key suspect in the NYS saga. But now we understand he's been, uh, you know, converted to state witness, isn't it? So it depends with the, uh, the information that we will provide to support or to aid the investigation that will, uh, uh, will determine how you'll be treated. Are you going, you might go there as a witness and then you end up as a accused based on the information you are giving. So aiding an investigation is a very good thing and highly advisable, uh, be true, uh, don't try. The moment you are true and again, you con by, by concealing some uh, you know, evidence, then uh, you not like the word aiding. What qualifies one to be under witness protection? Uh, many things, one, uh, your life is, uh, is, 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 um, is threatened. Uh, the case is of, uh, has so many interested parties. Uh, the case is of public interest. Imagine a case where uh, a small person like Kwena and is known to be a witness, maybe in a case of a deputy president. under witness protection in the in Rwanda. Uh, and I don't in, in any way insinuate that uh, uh, the deep in bio, what I intend to communicate is that uh, there are some cases that uh, uh, the, 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 that attention nationally or internationally that they attract may qualify uh, anyone participating in, in an ongoing investigation to fall under with uh, protection. But primarily anyone whose life uh, by virtue of their role in the investigation or in that case is their life is uh, under threat qualifies to be under witness protection. The jury and the fact of talk of, oh, I, I, I think I started by explaining that. Uh, uh, unless one has any other question, this is a very wide topic. We cannot exhaust uh, these conversations that have been happening across uh, if, uh, all serious law enforcement agencies. Uh, I've said that the IG has in, initiated a, a platform, engage the IG where you can always post your questions on uh, his Twitter handle, uh, your concerns, and uh, I believe he addresses them and uh, tackles them accordingly. At our level, we who are conversant with how these procedures and processes uh, happen, we have an obligation as well to uh, make the community a better place for all of us. And how do we do that? By clearing these perceptions, these myths, and uh, you know, replacing them with the facts. I do not intend uh, in any way to defend any investigate or any law enforcement agencies. I must admit that uh, the, all the bad things that are said and all the good things that are said are there. I cannot uh, uh, differentiate and say who is bad and who is good. 
All I know is that, for example, uh, uh, the, the police, which is majorly suffers the perception uh, that they are corrupt, that they are inhuman. The police, just like, uh, just like any other institution, I mean, uh, it has people from all the walks, all the, the, the divides. Uh, the, the Kiganjo is not a, a place where people are, where criminals are converted to become uh, pastors. Otherwise, what Tungekua and Ajela, what Tungekua and Ashiko and Apreko Kiganjo and Arubu Akio Azuri. Kiganjo is just a place where people are taught how to approach uh, security challenges in the, in the, in the, in the common way. It is so. If someone was recruited in the KDF, in the in the whichever enforcement ag uh, agents, Akiwa Muizi, nothing will change. That person is still a thief. So uh, and of course, when they do one or two uh, bad things, uh, they taint the image of the institution that they belong to. And unfortunately, uh, people tend to perceive that the entire uh, force is uh, probably the service is you know, is bad. No. Uh, Please tell them. And uh, personally, I do support a lot. But not, don't call me when uh, uh, you have done the wrong. And in many cases, I do receive quite a number of calls from friends and relatives and all that. Uh, the very first thing I'll always do is to explain to you. And I'll, the first thing I'll, I'll ask, Sometimes I have uh, the contact there. If I don't, I'll ask you, Ebuni Saidiwe Askari, and then Askari will tell me what has happened. Once I've understood what has happened, the first thing I'll always do is to make you understand that uh, this is what you ought to have done, this is what you ought to not have done, and this is the way to go. Then from there, uh, now that depends. It's not a matter of calling and saying it's idea we are to no. Your mutu cannot be assisted if they don't know that what they have done is wrong. First of all, I must make you understand that this is correct, this is wrong, and uh, I can also make you understand the repercussions of what you did uh, and how it can, uh, you know, uh, it should be done. Uh, uh, that far, maybe I should again allow the uh, audience to post uh, any questions. Madam Jerotich, if there are questions in the in the chat, maybe you can highlight. I will have not been. I was not following up. Oh uh, yeah, actually there are two questions. One is from Edwin and is asking why do we have challenges in witness protection act, especially uh, whistleblowers, and does the law encourage uh, whistleblowing? Why do we have challenges in witness protection act, especially whistleblowers? Uh, over time, witness blowing has been a challenge, not only in, the, in, in Kenya, but across so many, uh, across the globe. Because of the various ways of how the witness uh, uh, blowing is done. Uh, recently, I mean, uh, currently, uh, most of uh, each, each investigative agent was tasked to come up with a framework customized to their own needs. If it's care to come up with their own, if it is uh, needs their own uh, structure of going handling witness uh, whistleblowing, if it is a uh, DCI and all that. Because I think we realized over time, uh, we cannot have the best way to define just as terrorism that is agreed across board. So, because you realize how you define very well who is a witness blower in uh, DCI is not the, is, is actually very wrong when it is the same uh, if the same is copied and adapted in another agents. So that the, the challenge has been there is no uh, the, the the current the witness protection act is very is global. It tries to address all uh, agencies, uh, assuming that all agencies do their things the same way and all uh, witnesses do their things uh, the same. For example, uh, uh, when there are, there are other agencies which do not uh, pay for information, yeah, others do pay, but uh, 
now, I mean, they are all whistleblowers. This person has come and said, that I, I am aware so and so is, uh, is, is running one, two, three businesses. Uh, internally, that institution can only say, tell you thank you. For example, IPOA, because uh, I can, uh, they, uh, within the IPOA structure, there is nowhere where they, they can give you money for giving information about a rogue officer. Uh, I mean, you'll have supported. But when you go to KRA, it, it, you will be uh, supported. Then again, uh, the challenge is uh, uh, identification. Some, you realize some witnesses, I mean, whistleblowers don't want to be known. And by so doing, this very one piece, that part, same person wants to use it, hapa kwa DCI, atoke hapa, aende tena akulie mahali kungine, and, and all that and, and all that that came when uh, 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 agencies came up with the multi agents team uh, one person the same i mean you realize that is one person when the same information that the same this is being shared here and there you know those are some that's why we have uh, challenges in may i say interpreting the witness protection act uh, yes the law encourages uh, uh, whistleblowing highly encourages and if you have any information that you think uh, is very relevant and you don't know where to take it, please reach out to through the channels to reach to uh, me in person in Takusaidia where your information can be of help. If I am not sure whether I answered you, Edwin, very well. Uh, yes, yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, it's clear. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Next. I, there's, there's another question from Chris, uh, and he has uh, how devolved is IPOA? Uh, some of the far flanked uh, countries have uh, the, this authority miss, missing, and it has led to diminishing relations between civilians and the police. What could uh, be the uh, would what could uh, the internal ministry or like uh, just the ministry uh, do to support this? Okay. Now, uh, the independent oversight authority, I'm very familiar with the, um, uh, with, with the, with the institution. Uh, we work very closely uh, in various uh, uh, activities. Now, uh, one of it is mission, if I may say, if I may call it, is to establish, uh, to develop its functions. Currently, I understand uh, IPOA has uh, IPOA has regional offices in uh, in the coast uh, in Nakuru. But I also appreciate the fact that in some other areas they have not been able to have physical offices there. What I must assure Chris is that IPOA is represented in all regions uh, 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 through offline. Uh, no. For example, there, will, uh, there is an offline uh, uh, branch in Lodua that that handles the, the entire side of uh, up to uh, Trukana and all those ends. Uh, I, I, I do uh, want to be hesitant to tell you that when will this happen because uh, that is outside the bit of, uh, within it is outside my jurisdiction but uh, uh, being familiar with the, what they are doing is that uh, the intent actually when you look at uh, uh, their roadmap is that by 2022 they should be able to have all uh, counties represented uh, i'm not far, i'm not sure how far that is but in case you want the spot they, are, they have lines and you can be supported from wherever point you are within the uh, territory of uh, Kenya. Uh, of course, he's saying that has led to diminishing relationship between the uh, civilian and the police. No, uh, I would also be hesitant to say yes. The relationship between police and uh, the civilian is, is historical uh, from the Kenya police force and uh, up to date. Uh, the existence of non existence of IPOA uh, that the, the, the really do not con should not be a factor to uh, deteriorating the relationship. It in should be instead a motivating factor towards building confidence because one of the core um, um, uh, one of the core mandate of the IPOA is to ensure confidence in the in, in the policy. Uh, 
public to have confidence in, in, in policy. So I, uh, unless the specific cases are raised, we would, uh, would not be able to understand why, it, why the absence of an office of IPOA should be uh, the reason why the relationship is going uh, haywire. Uh, we don't have ministry called internal. It is it is interior coordination uh, of government. Internal ministry was uh, uh, deleted by uh, uh, the previous constitution just to correct the banakris. And uh, the other the extension of the question was what could be the doing to to this authority to cover all over the country support. Hey, I'm not sure whether I got the very last part, maybe. Okay, okay the last part. Hello? Sorry? Yes, yes. I think I'm also online. Yes, yes. Uh, this is my question. I, I think uh, the missing bit, the IPOA being uh, not available, or that office not being available across the country, is the reason as to why, you know, a majority of Kenyans do not trust the police. And uh, it is something that, uh, as a country, we've been fighting to actually make sure that the relationship between the police and the civilians is restored to, uh, to an extent that uh, when we have issues, uh, the civilians can be able to report first uh, the issues to the police to be able to handle them. But uh, I have some incidences where a civilian lost uh, trust in the police. And I've worked across the country where the IPOA is, uh, is active. Uh, the civilian are now, uh, the, the, the relationship between the authorities now and the civilians is kind of uh, uh, being restored to what we expect as a country. But uh, you realize in those areas where the IPOA, in most cases, people, the civilians will take it as a, the IPOA is there to actually uh, make sure that the police do their work in the right way professionally. But in places where uh, the IPOA is missing, uh, you find out that uh, within the police service, we have the wrong uh, people. We have uh, those uh, uh, individuals. Uh, I don't mean that uh, the National Police Service is... Uh, as a, as an agency, maybe it's wrong, but uh, some individuals will take advantage of uh, the civilians having no information about how the law enforcement is being undertaken. And they take advantage of that, uh, people lose money, and uh, some even give up in the process. You're going to the police, take a case, you're asked to come again after a week. Sometimes you are even, some cases are even ugly. To an extent that the police will always, at some point, uh, uh, the reports that we get from the public is that uh, they are even required to hire a taxi, probably, to take them around to look for the criminal. And you see, with that, uh, most of a majority of the civilians now lose trust with the police. And that's why I was asking, what is the interior ministry probably doing to make sure that the IPOA presence is felt across the country? So that when they have an issue with the uh, persons within the service, they are able to report and then that oversight role is being undertaken across the country to minimize cases where the civilians are losing that trust with the uh, law enforcement agencies. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you. I, I, I appreciate your feedback. Uh, uh, I've, I've, not, I've gotten your question very clearly. Uh, I, I am, uh, however, not able to give you much details on what the Interior Ministry uh, is doing, other than uh, uh, talking about the budgetary allocation. Uh, because uh, over the years, IPO has received a sufficient budget. Uh, to, uh, of course, that means that its operations are supported the, uh, very well. Uh, key point is that uh, you are suggesting, and I do agree with you, uh, that the decentralization of the services, uh, the presence of the service of the, of the IPOA across the, the country is very important. Uh, 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 you, you've talked of a very important point that uh, some few members of within the police do misuse uh, the privilege of the fact that they are the ones who know. And I have stated, and I, I'll say it again and again, 
a police officer is not a lawyer. That is why uh, we even have the ODPP to guide the police on how to uh, go about the criminal uh, cases uh, the right way. Uh, so when you see a police officer, please, uh, you have not seen a lawyer. When you see a police officer, you have not seen a working constitution. Uh, a police officer is supposed to give uh, guidance, uh, you know, by is a preventive. Uh, 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 this is how we, we should be looked at. The police are supposed to prevent, but by any chance, Ikiwapita, uh, I mean, uh, Ikiwapita, the DCI, I mean, uh, uh, the, 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 the specialized uh, part of it should be able to investigate what happened. But uh, the first line of defense, which is the national intelligence, is always there to help even the police before they see to uh, and advise them and say, Koshida, uh, this one is not uh, do it this way, do it that way. They are always seeing what is likely to happen tomorrow and actually even uh, give correct uh, statistical predictions. Uh, the relationship between uh, the police and, uh, and the civilian can be improved one by us, the civilians, and uh, and and as the police. I mean, both parties should be able to understand their role, so that then the police officer does not just stop you and because of your ignorance says, "Yeah, it's it No, no, no. If you know you, uh, I mean, many times. Me, uh, when, when I'm traveling, you are stopped by an officer or you, you encounter a police officer and you listen to them, uh, the way they argue. And when you know, you then ask them a question, a very simple question. How about an officer? You are telling me A, B, C, D, one, two, three. From a layman perspective, what about this? They realize ah, you might, you have, a, you know, you don't uh, behave like you are teaching them. Of course, they don't like uh, that idea of, but uh, it is not bad when you know to also teach the police officer and tell them this is what the law requires you to do uh, because a police officer is not a lawyer. Yes, uh, that, that, that is my humble appeal that let's take uh, up, understand our roles, uh, understand what is expected of you, try to familiarize with these uh, laws. Uh, you know, traffic act, uh, try to familiarize with the penal code, the criminal procedure once in a while, the same way we are familiar, you know, Twitter just came the other day, WhatsApp, we all know how to post the status. We have had the constitution all, all those years, we don't even know, if, if you ask anyone to just quote for you even a single uh, uh, provision, they don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging, all of us to uh, familiarize with the law so that we are not misused by those who know much or little. Uh, next, uh, Madam uh, Deruto. Um, on the chat, uh, Michael has asked a question, but I, I don't quite uh, get it. So Michael, let me give you the privilege to ask. And uh, because of time, we'll let this be the last uh, question. So Michael, you can ask your question. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you can hear you. Okay, so my question is uh, concerns about uh, when it comes to uh, when you see uh, along the road across the uh, uh, br uh, bridges, footpaths, you notice that there are posters where people advertise for advertise uh, tracking services for stolen phones and for other purposes. Uh, doesn't that uh, constitute to an offense? for advertising services that are not within uh, maybe their jurisdiction because private companies are not allowed to perform such actions in terms of maybe tracking stolen phones unless it is with the DCI. And at the same time, when it comes to betting companies, uh, you see, you notice that there are unsolicited messages and when it comes to loan application companies where they usually get people's contacts from the apps they give. And then through those contacts, they try to call people who are unrelated to those services and to try to coerce them to tell the people who have taken loans to pay back those loans. Doesn't it constitute an offense or uh, what's the issue with that? Because I usually find it uh, like a gray area, which I'm not so sure 
if it's an if it's an offense and which offense they've committed and how it can be handled. Thanks, uh, Mike. Two questions. One, uh, 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 the, you, the, this is what is supposed to be done across all offenses, criminal offenses. Eh? Yeah. Uh, when when something happens, it is not primarily the police to take it up. I have said only the parliament is the uh, uh, is a, is a state or the government uh, where the government is the complainant. All other cases, murder, robbery, simu, all of them, the complainant is you, Michael. The complainant is me, Kwena. So it is upon me to take it up and formally make a report with the relevant authority and support them to prove my case so that it can be successfully prosecuted. Uh, however, that does not mean that the police should sit and see people being uh, mugged and their work again i said is to prevent that's why you see patrols around everywhere in the country we have mobile patrols uh, motorbikes uh, vehicles police patrols foot patrols uh, both uniformed and 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 um, and, and, and the civilian uh, uh, the simple thing is to try to uh, counterattack those uh, or rather prevent the likelihood of those uh, cases happening. But in the event that they are not able to, because uh, one firearm is supposed to protect uh, uh, 450 lives, uh, it may not be realistic or rather practical for, for, for police to be everywhere and every time to protect you. And then the, at that point, it is now where we are saying it is your obligation to, uh, in case now it has happened, one, one of the guns that is supposed to protect us 450 is protecting one of us. So then it means 349 are left, uh, if I may say, helpless. And if something has happened. It is upon uh, you now to go and report. It is very good, uh, the, the way you've indicated, that uh, mobile tracking, it's actually, uh, is, is actually not done by DCI uh, for your information. When uh, for you to get into uh, to track somebody's phone, it is not by default that uh, when you are DCI officer you do it or any other officer, including national intelligence. There are two parameters that qualifies uh, someone's uh, uh, mobile to be tracked or communication to be put uh, on monitoring uh, ring. Number one, there has to be uh, an ongoing case active, not a closed case. Uh, it, there, there must be an ongoing uh, uh, case that is likely uh, to, to, to threaten the life or a property of uh, the life of, uh, of, uh, of a citizen or a property of a citizen. That way, uh, the respective any agency, uh, rather uh, respective relevant agents, is allowed to track down or in, uh, get into that. And how is it done? It is uh, it, is, it is done with the help or with the involvement of service providers, for example, Safaricom or any other service that uh, uh, you might be uh, you might be using. Uh, or if not that, the second parameter is you have to obtain a, 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 a court order, uh, what would be a warrant to, uh, of course, that gives very valid reasons as to why you want to uh, monitor my communication or rather my movement using my device. So uh, when you see, when you see uh, uh, those adverts, please ignore them. Uh, what uh, after ignoring them, uh, you can report. If you report uh, them, then uh, action will be taken. But without your report, uh, I repeat, it is only development that we will uh, the, the government will initiate on its own motion. In respect to uh, soliciting uh, mobile numbers, that again is again. Uh, 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 I have many times uh, spoken about identity theft. Uh, I've, I've been advising and I'll keep advising that do not share your information anyhow. 
uh, your information that uh, can identify you or that can be used against you. Recently, I put a challenge on, uh, on a certain uh, local bank and they asked them, uh, they, they, they asked me on, uh, on a platform to share my information via uh, DM. And the, the, the argument is that that way is safe. And I told them, look here, I want us to look at it from this perspective. You, your system is very secure. For example, it cannot be hacked. But my phone here with my Twitter or my Facebook or my WhatsApp is not protected. Neither do I have even an idea of what protection uh, or security is. So if somebody hacks my phone and uh, gets access to my DM communication for Facebook, they will be able to see uh, what information I sent to the bank or to, the, to, or, uh, to somebody. So uh, then I go and that information is used to exploit me in future. As you say, they call you to tell you to repay the, the, the loan or tell you, and because they have all the information uh, that uh, they may use to convince you that they are genuine, uh, uh, lure you into getting uh, exploited. Uh, how will I be able to, uh, you know, uh, uh, prove that this information was not given by by the, by the bank that I shared with, or it is not somebody who accessed my 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 device and got the information. So for that matter, my advice is uh, avoid as much as, especially when you get these apps where you are requested to put a lot of information. Please disregard. Uh, believe in hard working. Uh, I don't see why you should uh, provide. Uh, there's an app I saw somewhere you put all the names, all your ID number. Uh, I mean, all that information is too much to risk. Uh, there are no legislations that uh, you will go to betting and say they are the ones who gave. Because betting can prove to you that the betting company is able to to prove that they are not the, uh, who, who shared the information. Uh, Bana Michael, maybe I guided you properly. It's unclear uh, whether there is a lack or whether the laws, are, uh, the policies are not sufficient enough for you to take uh, uh, to take action when you see such issues. But because you have told me that uh, it's only under defilement that the police uh, is automatically authorized to take that to take up that action. But when it comes to posters and stuff like that, uh, it has to be something that is reported. So is there is it a lack of uh, is it the laws that do not are not sufficient enough for the to allow the police to take action, or is it a policy issue? Is it a policy issue or a personal uh, a personal initiative issue? Uh, it is a. When, when you read the, the, the IPOA report 2019-2020, it yeah. is lack of infrastructure. The law, the, 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 the law is very clear. Uh, I just gave that as a reference to, to support my argument. Uh, uh, the law is very clear that an officer uh, can, uh, can, uh, can, can arrest you or detain uh, anything on suspicion uh, or, uh, or rather reasonable believe that you or that thing is uh, likely or has been used to commit a felony. So yes, the police officer can look at that thing and say, eh, we, this guy does not advertise this kind of, so he, this is likely to be used to commit a felony and take it up. But now uh, what will you do? Just bring down the, 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 the what? The, the, the advertising or the post. And even bringing the, down that post you, you, uh, will not still help as such. Yeah, because uh, you bring it down today, in some other place you'll get. So you realize that the lack of enough personnel uh, is, I mean, is the main reason to be very straightforward to you, or rather to be a little bit uh, transparent with you. Uh, we don't have uh, the we there are no enough of officers to go around there you know they're not allowed i mean the law uh, do not allow them but imagine when you have police officers going around to deal with the uh, use of the bows our ganga 
hizo unasema za ku advertise tracking sasa who, who will be looking at the other who will be at the station so the, the challenge is manpower a straightforward oh. answer ah that one is very clear i appreciate a lot asante kujibu kwa hiyo i appreciate a lot okay Thank you so much, Alinori. I don't think there is any more question in the chat, uh, but I would like to ask the uh, members in the in the meeting that if you still have any question, you can post it on the WhatsApp chat, and I'm sure Alinori will be uh, able to answer. So we've really ran out of time. <laughs> Sorry for taking this much uh, time, but the discussion has really been uh, very interesting. I guess it's because it, it's something that touches uh, our day-to-day -day life. Doesn't sound technical, but then I'm sure each one of you uh, has felt uh, the impact or like just uh, Alinori explaining it in simple terms. So thank you so much, Alinori. I don't know if we have any parting shot before we give our leaders. Uh, thank you, thank you. Just briefly, I just uh, saw in my DM, uh, maybe I have a request from uh, uh, from very senior, uh, from very senior uh, uh, enforcement department requesting that the next time, uh, Actually, they were requesting if the, someone was requesting from uh, Interpol and the, the person has also served in uh, DCI and the Inter and, and, and IPOA, that uh, if you can allow them to present, actually seeking whether non members can be allowed to present. Uh, so uh, maybe, uh, but in the interest of time, I don't know whether it is possible. If it's not, uh, in the next subsequent, please, uh, members and uh, the members of the public in the forum. Uh, they are interested, more interested parties. Uh, I would be interested when we bring in the Interpol uh, the team uh, and uh, probably uh, some senior level from the office of the IG to also help us highlight on some more, more uh, jurisdic jurisdiction areas. Uh, thank you very much for sacrificing your time. It's always a learning experience. Uh, we don't know all. Uh, in law enforcement, just like law, it's always dynamic, things keep changing. If I said uh, this today, it is not permanent. Tomorrow, parliament is there to enact new legislations. If you find yourself tomorrow in the court and they tell you that uh, this is the law, don't say Alinori said. Uh, please keep yourself updated as frequent as you can. That is my last word. The laws are not permanent. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Alinori. And we are really open to partnerships outside uh, the members. So we can, uh, we will welcome a presentation even from uh, other people, not necessarily members. So just reach out to us and we'll make sure that uh, we organize for a platform for them to share what it is they have for us. We really appreciate uh, their effort. Uh, so without much ado, I want to welcome our vice chair, Mr. Frederick. Uh, if you are on, uh, you can just uh, say something. Wow. <clears throat> Good evening. Th thank you for the session. And um, I have really learned. And thank you, Buana Kwena, for the sacrifice and also touching on things that uh, affect us every day. Uh, I don't have much, but just from the bottom of my heart to just appreciate each one of us for taking time and just learning something. Thank you and God bless you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Frederick. So Chair, you can officially close the meeting for us. Good night. Good night. Uh, I don't know if Kenny's your online. Okay, if not, I guess uh, it's about time. We uh, can all now leave the meeting. Thank you so much for your time. Good night. Thank you. Alinori, thank you very much.
Much appreciated. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, then, bro. Let's keep in touch. And thank you, Fred. Yeah, <laughs> you always never fail to rise up to the occasion. Eh? <laughs> I'm a most of the senior. Thank, thank you. Thank you. you. Have a good night. Okay. Too.